Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'd like to tell you a funny story that I think you'll find interesting. There's a bit of drama in there, but it ultimately turns out okay. So the Mavic Mini arrived a couple of weeks ago, and I spent the entire first day just tearing open the box, doing an unboxing video, and then I did closer looks of all the products to show you what they did, how they work together, where you plug them in, all that kind of stuff. And I couldn't wait to get out to fly, but it was too late in that afternoon to go out. So the next morning I woke up, I charged up the batteries the night before, raced out the door, and started shooting footage all around my home. I shot over lakes and farms and fields just like the one behind me. And if you watch that second video, you'll actually see this field in that video. And I shot from 200 feet, 100 feet, I took pictures, I did it in different resolutions just to give you a real good feel for the kind of images this product can produce. And then I got the bright idea, how do I show them how fast it can fly and really get some dramatic footage? So I thought, no brainer, I'll just take it down the far end of this field, I'll put it in sport mode, I'll start really high, screaming down the field as I descend and come across the top of the grass. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if I flew right across the top of the grass because it'll give you the feel like you're in the quad and you're cruising through that grass at speed. It'll really give you a feel for how fast the quad is. The other thing I was testing was on the bottom of the quad, there were two sets of sensors. There's a time of flight sensor, and there's another one called the VIO, which is video inertial odometry, which is a way it measures where it is in space. In addition to the GPS and the TOF sensors, it knows exactly where it is. Now those are really good to keep a quad stable in addition to the GPS, but a lot of the less expensive quads use that, but don't really have the algorithms to keep track of it. So if you fly it over ground, that's very similar in color or shape, or if you fly it over water, the quad can lose its mind and flip over. So I wanted to check that, but really what I wanted to do was just fly it really fast, really low to the ground. So I did my first pass and it worked great, but I wasn't low enough. I was just touching the tops of the grass. So I did a second pass and I got down a little lower and I thought, wow, that's really great. That's the one I'm gonna use. But then I don't know why I said, let me see if I can go even lower. So I went down that end of the field, 250 feet, screaming down the field, dropped down to a couple of feet off the ground. I'm cruising through the tops of the grass and it looks fantastic. I didn't realize that this hill over here, there's a rise to the field, and there's a hill at the end of it, and I'm watching the FPV, and the next thing I know, boom, the, I crashed the drone, and it's flipped upside down somewhere in this field behind me. Now, I can't possibly convey how big this area is behind me, and all I really knew was that the drone was on that end of the field. Now, okay, I had visual line of sight on it, but I was looking at the display as I was flying through it to make sure I didn't hit a branch or a tree or something under there, and it got stuck somewhere out in the field. So you can imagine my panic at that point. I've got one of the very few of these that are actually out there for testing. DJI's trusted me to take good care of it and make sure that I can return it if they ask for it. But more importantly, I had other clips to do. It was gonna rain that night, so if I left this out in this field, somebody could find it and they'd blow the NDA, or worse, it could get destroyed in the rain. But the thing that really made it tough was my wife had just called and said, get home for dinner. And I'm like, honey, I'll be there in a little bit. I have one more pass to do in the field. And me, big dummy, crap it's somewhere in the end of the field. So I'm freaking out at this point. So I took a breath and I thought, wait a minute, DJI has a Find My Drone application on all the other DJI quads. Now I didn't check to see if it was part of the DJI Fly app because I hadn't really explored the app yet. And I was shaking when I was holding this thing. I'm like, I got to find this drone. And, and you can't just walk through knee deep grass out here and just hopefully find it. So I fired up the application. I opened it up and there's a beacon and it shows you exactly where the drone landed and it shows you a little blue dot of where you're standing. So it's a bit like if you've ever done geocaching and if you haven't, by the way, look into that because that's one of those nerdy exercises that any kind of family out there can use to keep their kids entertained. It's sort of a treasure finding application, but it's like geocaching where you know where you are, you know where the target is, and you just start walking. And as you're walking, the blue dot gets closer and closer to the aircraft. And better yet, you can hit a button on the remote and make it beep and make it flash. And I'm turning all that stuff on. So I'm out here in the field, listening really carefully for the beep, trying to get as close as I can to the aircraft. And lo and behold, there it was sitting in a bunch of bushes and branches and, and barbs and things like that, just turned upside down as nice as it could be. So I grabbed it, took it home, and, and basically I'm good to go. It's been flying ever since, but what I'm trying to get across in this clip is number one, don't panic if you lose your drone because the Mavic Mini's got that Find My Drone feature, and I'm telling you, it'll lead you right to the drone. So if you lose it, you can turn on the lights, you can turn on the, the beeping sound, and that'll help you locate it as well. But that, that geo-positioning of the application knowing exactly where the drone is and exactly where you are because of the controller just gives you that peace of mind knowing that if you crash it in the field like Big Dummy Rick did, 
you can find it and you don't have to spend six weeks with 100 volunteers combing the field to try to find this tiny little drone, which is almost the exact same color as the grass. So what I want to show you now is what the application looks like and I'll kind of recreate it, sort of one of those crime dramas where I'll recreate me walking through the field. I won't fake the panic because you know it's going to be fake, but I'll walk around and show you what the application is showing you and then we'll see if I can find the drone again. So I'm going to hide it, then I'll do some screen captures of it when I'm walking through the field to try and find the drone. So stay tuned for that part. Okay, you can see from the screen that I've actually got the drone in tall grass and it's upside down right now. Uh, it's somewhere out in that field. I didn't put it too far away because it's getting kind of dark and I want to find it pretty quickly. But to get started, on the upper right hand corner of the application, you'll see the three dots. Tap those. Once you do, it'll bring you up to the top headings. You want to go to safety and then scroll up a little bit and you'll see the find my drone. Tab, hit that. The first thing it'll do is bring up a map of where you are relative to where the drone is. So it lets you know that the drone's been missing for zero minutes. I'm off to the left of it. The drone is that little triangle shape over there and it's still on because it's blinking green. Now what's nice about this is I can actually zoom in a little bit closer to show me relatively where I am compared to the drone. So I'm gonna start walking and you'll notice when I do, the blue light starts moving. So that blue dot is me walking towards the drone. Now if I make a mistake and walk the wrong direction like this, now you can see I'm walking away from it and that's not a good thing. So let me turn and walk back towards the drone. Now what's also nice is you can overlay other maps. So for example, right now I'm in the standard map. I can overlay uh, the satellite image. And that's really helpful if this thing crashes near some kind of landmark. So if there's a big tree that's by itself or maybe a rock formation, something you can recognize, you'll know how close it is to the drone. And you can actually overlay both of them with a mixed view like that. But I like the standard view because it gives me a good idea of exactly where the drone is. So. Let's go back to a tighter view, and it looks like I'm going to walk to the right, and let me see how close we get. Now, I haven't turned on the beeping or the lights yet, because if you've been flying the drone a while and you crash it, you're probably going to have, you know, very little power left in the battery, and you want to save that so when you get close to it, you can turn it on so it doesn't run out of power. But I'm getting pretty close to the drone, and when I get right on top of it, I'm going to actually turn on the beeping and the flashing. All right, so I should be pretty close to it right now. Looks like I'm almost on top of it, actually. So let me turn on, I'll hit that button on the bottom. All right, you can hear it. It's over this way. Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay, so see how that zero, that dot is right on top of the drone at this point? Let me turn off that flashing. So there's the drone, safely nestled in the grass. Now, I crashed it a little bit uh, wilder than that, but that's pretty much what it looked like when I found it. So I love this application because it really just gives me all kinds of confidence around, if I put it down in a field like I've done before, I can find it again and, and put it back in its case and have it ready for the next day of flying. I hope you found that helpful in showing you one more feature of the DJI Fly application you can use with the Mavic Mini. Now hopefully you'll never have to use that, but I love having the peace of mind of knowing if I do something goofy and park the drone in a field or a tree someplace that I can use that Find My Drone to actually find it. Now you might want to test it because you don't want to have that be your first experience when you're actually looking for your drone. So here's a fun thing to do with your kids. Have your kids take the drone, take it out back and hide it someplace, and then you pop out the front door of the house and search for it, sort of like a treasure hunt, and that way you'll get familiar with the application before you have to actually use it in real world conditions but for me I love the fact that they built that in there because we're flying drones that are in visual line of sight but every now and then you're far enough away where maybe you bring it down too low and it catches a branch and it falls and you could spend an afternoon looking for the drone and the whole point of buying a drone is to fly the drone not be searching for it in the field so hopefully this information was helpful if you have any questions about what I've covered today or anything else about the Mavic Mini or any of the stuff we talk about drop them in the comments below I'll get back to you as quickly as I can I really appreciate the questions you're asking because they're really good questions which means you're thinking about the drone and I want to make sure I answer them all because one of the things that I try to do because I got the product early is to give you all the information you need to understand what this product can do compared to other products so keep those questions coming in because I love putting these clips together and when I figure something out about this quad or any technology I just can't wait to get out in front of a camera and talk about it so thanks an awful lot for watching and until next time happy flying Thank you.